What's up everybody, Renfail here, and welcome to my Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Starfield, which has been updated to the May 15th, 2024 update that uh, Bethesda did for Starfield, which added ship decorations and survival modes and everything else. So hopefully you'll enjoy. It's a big video, there's a lot of sections, so if you want to skip through and just check out individual sections, use the chapter uh, links below in the YouTube description. Other than that, I hope you enjoy. The character creation process for Starfield is as robust as you would expect from a AAA game with the body, face, and background being fully customizable. You do get to start off with a biometric ID, which is a personnel record essentially, where you can go through here and pick from one of like 30 some, I think it's 30, 40, it looks like there's 40, there's 40 different presets. But once you figure out the preset that's going to work from you, like let's say we want to go with this one right here, you can then go straight into the body and you can adjust the body type. You can make him thin, fat, um, heavy, muscular, um, different types of bodies. So you can go with this or this. Um, you can have different walk styles if you want. All these are customizable, the skin tone and everything else. You can then go into your face, change the face tone as much as you want. You can also go in here and you know, change the head shapes. There's also um, the ability to refine this as you see fit. Also change the different hairstyles. There are quite a few to choose from. There's hair colors, there's different types of facial hair, facial hair color, different eye types. And of course, as you can see there in the middle, you've got the ability to refine these as you see fit. So people have done some really creative things with the character creation. So if you wanna go in here and just really take your time, there's a lot of stuff you could do here with the character creator on top of which are the backgrounds and skills. Now the backgrounds of the game are essentially the starter professions. These are the things you were doing before you became a miner on the planet that you start off on. And the way you can consider these is just, they're things that you did before and you come with three starting skills. Each one of these comes with three starter skills. Um, you can also use the file not found, which just gives you generally a wellness, ballistics, and piloting. But all of these, if you want to think about them as fluff, you can. Each one of these is going to give you some additional uh, options in dialogue that are nothing more than roleplay options. So if you're a soldier, you're going to have some soldier options that pop up from time to time in the dialogue. If you're a space scoundrel, you'll get those from time to time. Um, they really don't do anything other than add some additional fluff to conversations. What you're really looking at here are the three starting skills that everybody gets when they come out of the gate. Now these different skills are things you might want to consider uh, in the long run because in the game you can earn every single skill in the game if you want to take the time to go through the new game plus modes and grind out all of the skills. Um, but the starter ones are essentially the three that you're going to get to start the game with which make your early leveling uh, experience much easier and sort of define the play style. So if you went with the Cyber Runner, you're obviously going to be relying upon stealth, uh, you're going to be using security to pick locks, and you're going to be stealing things. Whereas if you go with, say, the Long Hauler, it's going to be more about piloting ships and lifting things, um, being able to also use ballistic weapons. So this is going to be about you know having a good ship. Uh, the Pilgrim is going to be about scavenging, surveying, and gastronomy. So think about these as more or less just sort of the a quick and easy way it's kind of like a quick start to the game where you don't have to worry about picking skills from the massive list of available ones and they just sort of predefine them for you and then these help you get going in the early stages of the game now along with this is consider the fact that a lot of these skills um such as um uh, let's go in here and look at, I believe it's Persuasion as an example. Um, persuasion is one of the examples of a skill that has within it additional skills that are locked behind skill progression. So there is a skill called Negotiation in the Persuasion line. Um, and in order to be able to negotiate with people, you must first learn how to persuade people. And once you get better at Persuasion, you will then be able to unlock the Negotiation tactic. Several of the skills in the game are locked behind um, the use of a skill like this. The other one would be the... I'm going to scroll down here until I find it really quick. Uh, I know Soldier has it, but I don't 
know if it, there is boost pack training. So you cannot use boost packs unless you have the boost pack training ability. So if you want to be able to use boost packs from the get go, you're going to want to have um, those uh, those skills chosen for you. So think about that as you're going through and looking at the various backgrounds. Next up are traits, which are essentially optional that you can add. At, they're optional things that you can add at character creation, which give a little bit more fluff to the character. They don't really define your character at all. Um, they simply have some additional pros and cons because they do all have pros and cons. So as an example, the alien DNA um, allows you to start with increased health and oxygen, but healing and food items aren't as effective. And if you go with Dream Home, you're going to have a, a luxurious customizable house on a peaceful planet, but unfortunately it has a 125,000 credit mortgage with Galbank that has to be paid off weekly. Then there's Empath, so performing actions your companions like will result in a temporary increase in combat effectiveness, but if you do anything they don't like, it's going to have the exact opposite effect. And then there's also the Extrovert, or you're a people person. Exerting yourself uses less oxygen when you're adventuring with human companions, but less when adventuring alone. And there's quite a few to choose from in here. Um, some of these, uh, I believe there's one here called Wanted as an example. Someone has put a price on your head and word has spread, so occasionally armed mercenaries will show up and try to kill you. Uh, however, being cornered gives you an edge, and when your health is low, you do extra damage. Um, this applies to space and land encounters. So. As you go through the game, you'll occasionally get attacked when you least expect it. Now you can choose up to three of these. I tend to look at these as sort of roleplay optional. And you'll notice that they are listed as optional, so you don't have to take these if you don't want to. But my most recent character, which was my second playthrough, I went through and chose a soldier. So I chose a United Colonies Dative as an example. Now notice that as soon as I chose that, it locked out Neon Street Rat and Freestar Collective Settler. And the reason for that is because if you read this, it says, cannot be combined with any other faction allegiance trait. So because I chose to align my soldier with the United Colonies, it immediately locks me out of the other two. Same thing here, if you choose a uh, religious trait, it will lock you out of other religions. So just think about which one of these you might wanna choose when you're playing the game. You don't have to choose these if you don't want to. They really don't impact your gameplay other than adding some additional role play stuff. Um, which can crop up in conversations, but mostly it just relates to um, faction and or things like, um, I want to find it here, uh, kid stuff. And this one gives you parents. Um, and there's some interesting things that happen with your parents along the way, which are sort of like role play quest lines, um, which is quite fun. So I took this one my very first playthrough and it was, it was very interesting to see. Um, so just bear that in mind that all of them have pros and cons and add a little bit of extra flavor to your playthrough. Now when the game first launched, it didn't have any uh, survival options, but one of the things they did with the May 15th, 2024 update is they added all of these survival options into the game so that you can tweak the experience to be exactly what you want and you get either a uh, plus or minus to your XP gain depending on if you've gone super easy or super hard. The normal modes don't give you any bonuses, but there are all sorts of different things. Like in the base game, when you first started off, um, there was no ammo weight, but now you can actually choose to give uh, ammo actually has weight. And food back in the day only did uh, positive things, but now there's positive and negatives. Um, like malnourished and dehydrated, uh, which is a lot of fun if you're not eating and drinking on a regular basis. So you can go through here and you can tweak these as you see fit to increase the enemy combat damage, to increase the player combat damage, enemy ship damage, player ship demo, damage, ammo weight, carry capacity, cargo assets distance, vendor credits, medical item healing, food healing, sleep healing, sustenance, combat affliction gain, affliction treatment, prognosis, environmental damage and afflictions, damage restoration, aim assistance, which I absolutely love on the controller, and then how do you want the game to save um, on rest, on wait, on travel, on pause, you know, to find the time that it does. Um, so you can go through here and tweak all of these as you see fit to give yourself exactly the survival mode playthrough that you want, or you can just leave them on all on, on normal mode and just play the game as it came out of the box. It really is up to you. Now, one of the things about Starfield is that there is no uh, 
like you know a lot of games where you would just hit the Y button as an example and it would switch between your equipped weapons it doesn't work like that in Starfield instead you have favorited weapons and the way those work is by the d-pad so when I open up the d-pad the directional pad on the controller um, I can go down I can go left I can go right or I can go up and you could fill all of these slots with weapons abilities and items so as an example on the left I've got the revenant gun and the rapid commander's calibrator Maelstrom. On the right, I have Professional Tombstone um, and the Riot Shotgun. And on the top, I've got the Assassin's Equinox. And then down, I have the Med Pack. So we can go through here. And all I have to do if I want to switch weapons is I hit the correct direction on the D pad and then I hit the A button and it switches over to that weapon. So once you get used to how the system works, it's pretty seamless it's not a lot different than the Y button would work in many other shooter games um, and then of course if you want to use your med pack you would go down now how do you set the weapons up to put them in those slots it's as easy as going into your inventory going into your weapons section and you're gonna notice a heart next to the ones that I have favorited so if I want to unfavorite this one for a minute I can um, so we'll, we'll, uh, if I wanted to remove that one um, I could but the way you would do this is say I want to move it over here and and what I've done is I've essentially moved that over to the far right you'll notice otherwise it was right here so we'll put it back there so you just click the favorite button and then choose the slot that you want to put it in you know hit the A button and then boom it's there it's been favorited as marked on the left hand side with the heart and then you exit out of here and you can easily switch between those um, like so and that's how you favorite items, weapons, and so on and so forth. Scanner mode is how you find things in the environment, ranging from harvestable nodes to bringing up different POIs that you can fast travel to once you've explored them, as well as interactable objects. So this is a barren planet, so there's probably not going to be a lot to see if you're on a planet with flora and fauna. It's going to show up accordingly. You'll see plants, you'll see animals. But essentially when you open this up, what you're looking for are these blue highlighted objects. Those are things that you have not yet scanned. And also in the distance, you're going to see POIs. In this case, it says unknown. And if you look on the bottom left, it says scan. So if we hit the scan button, it now says that's a hillside bunker. Over here, there's another one. It says unknown. Now it says unexplored biological feature. We can scan around here and see other things. Right down here is an example of there is an interactable object, a screwdriver that we can pick up or a vice grip. But there's also this thing over here, which it says is water. And if we get close enough to it, and um, I'll be able to scan it. And there goes, the scan just popped. I can hit scan and now it turns green because I have now scanned it. But I can also still harvest it. And what you can do to harvest it is you can pull out your cutter which you get in the early stages of the game and you use this to harvest anything from iron to water nodes like this and the general idea is that when you have a node selected you're gonna pull the right trigger and a laser beam is gonna it's gonna pierce like this and it will harvest that resource I'm purposefully not pointing it at that because I wanted to show you the difference between the normal mode which is just pulling the trigger like this and then the targeting mode which is holding the left trigger and if you look at the center you'll notice how those three um, lines progress towards the center of the screen until they connect to form a uh, I don't know what shape that is it's not a triangle but I forget the term for it when you've done that you're essentially focus firing and you'll harvest resources much more rapidly than if you were just to pull the trigger normally so if I were to go over here and hold that left trigger down until they're all the way in the middle and then click it's a nearly instantaneous harvest as opposed to taking a little bit of time if I go over here and try this one um, normally you'll see the difference we're just gonna go here we're gonna point it at it and we're gonna pull the trigger and it took a, a, a little bit longer um, so basically what you're gonna do with your scanner here is you're gonna look around the environment and you're gonna scan for different features and POIs that you would then go uh, run around and explore and in the case of um, ones that are highlighted with the white background you've already explored there and if you notice there is a fast travel button that pops up that you can use to fast travel but when it's a black background you cannot fast travel to it because you haven't seen it and explored it yet so we would need to run over there to explore the POI now on top of that is the fact that if you notice here on the ground when you bring up the scanner mode it's showing me arrows on the ground 
what that's doing is it's pointing me towards the nearest um, objective that I have for the quest that I'm on. It shows me how to get there. It's, it's a pathing. Now the thing is, is that it's it's only works if there's a definable path to the place that you're trying to get to. If you're down in caves and you've had to jump across something or go across a void or something, you might not have a path that you can see. And after a few moments, the path does disappear, so you have to turn the scanner off and bring it back up to be able to see that path again. But these are the different ways that you can use the scanner to find harvestable objects like plants and resources. It's also the way that you can scan creatures when you see them on planets, which is useful for surveying, because in order to survey a planet, you have to survey all the wildlife, all the flora, all the fauna, and everything else, but also um, to figure out where to go if you get lost and you're trying to find a doorway or an elevator to get out. That's how you do it with the scanner. Now, along with your own inventory, which can be accessed from the character panel at any point in time, you can also access your ship's inventory if you're within um, a certain radius of your ship. I think it's 200 meters. I can't remember if they've changed that or not. Um, but essentially, as long as you're within a certain distance of your ship, you can actually access your ship's inventory, your cargo, remotely. So you go into the ship window, which is here. Um, this will show you your home ship. And on the bottom right, you'll see a crew window as well as a cargo hold. And what you're looking for is the cargo hold. Once you open that up, you are now in your cargo hold. You can add things to the cargo hold or you can pull things out of the cargo hold. Now, the really important thing about the cargo hold is that it's much, much bigger than your own inventory. If you look on the bottom left where it shows the mass, my mass currently is 232. That's the maximum amount of weight I can carry. My ship, on the other hand, can carry 2200, or 2280, sorry. So it can carry a lot more. So one of the tricks that you could do, and that I like to do, is every time I come back to my ship, I end up dumping everything that's the heaviest in my inventory, which generally speaking are the resources that you harvest on planets. Those end up weighing quite a bit. If you go over here and look at um, this, we've got 464 um, pounds of stuff. There's a lot of different things in here. A lot of them are miscellaneous. But um, I've emptied my ship out recently, but the resources are the ones that tend to weigh the most. So as you go around exploring planets and looting bodies and buying resources and everything else, stash them in your ship as soon as you get back or as soon as you're within range of your ship. That way they're there and they're not taking up precious space. And then once you get back to your home base, you can take everything off of your ship and go and put it in um, your storage space on the planet to use for crafting from there or you can actually sell at the merchants um, and you can sell directly from your ship as well probably one of the best tips I can give new players is that your ship has a cargo hold and in this cargo hold is where you can stash all of the things that are the heaviest items that you don't want to carry around but your ship has a limited cargo hold, which we talked about um, previously. In this case, 2280 with the shield breaker. But you have infinite storage back at the lodge on Jemison in New Atlantis. So the tip that I can give you, which allows you to get around the weight issue, is that if I were to pick everything up from the cargo hold right now, um, there's 464 um, kilos of things in here. If I were to put those into my inventory, it would severely make me over severely overburdened, and that would slow me down, and it would take me forever to walk from the ship to the lodge. I would consist continually run out of oxygen and have tons of issues. It would just take me forever. But there is a kind of tricky workaround, but you have to do it when you're not on Jemison, because once you're overburdened, you're not allowed to fast travel. So the way you do this is. You come to your ship's cockpit when you're on anywhere other than Jebison, right? And you go into your cargo hold, and you're going to transfer the items. And you're going to go over here to the shield breaker, as an example. And I'm going to take, say, whatever it is that I want to pull out of here. Like, let's say I want to pull the weapons out. And I would, you know, take these weapons out and put them into my inventory, right? Now that they're in my inventory, um, if we go here and check really quick. I don't think I'm overburdened yet. Not quite yet. Um, but I am much heavier now but let's just pretend I'm overburdened for the moment then what you would want to do go to your star map and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for uh, the Alpha Centauri we're gonna go back to Jemison here and we're gonna go to as we see here go to Jemison oops click the wrong uh, click the moon and not the planet 
there's the Jemison, and then we're going to go straight to the Lodge. And what this is going to do is it's going to bypass the fast travel restriction, and it's going to put me right outside of the door to the Lodge. And this is really handy if you've got, you know, 1,500, 2,000 kilos of stuff on you, which would almost instantly drain your oxygen and CO2 and make it really difficult to run around the planet. Um, as you're trying to hoof it from the spaceport to the lodge. So once it deposits you in front of the lodge, there's two different places that you can stash items in the lodge. One is your personal storage in your room, and the other one is downstairs at the crafting place. So I'm going to show you the downstairs first, because this is where you're going to want to put all of your crafting materials and all of your food extras like baguettes and tomatoes and pears and plums and all the things you're going to use for crafting over here at the crafting station. You're looking for this little box right here. It's a storage box. This is an infinite storage box. It has no limit. Notice it says mass dash dash. That's infinite. So I put all of my resources in here and I put so resources all over crafting components and aid are all of the cooking utensils uh, or cooking ingredients I should say. Carrots, celery, merlot, Pinot Noir, cheese sticks, chunks cake, cheese steak, chunks pies, potatoes, all these different things that you use for cooking. Now, I put all my crafting resources here, but upstairs is where you want to put all of your other things, like all the spacesuits that you find and all the extra weapons that you find. So let's go ahead and run down the hall here to your room, because we do get an additional infinite storage box here. You're going to come into your room, and right here in this safe is another infinite storage box. Uh, we can see I've already got stuff stashed in here. I'm going to go into my inventory. We're going to take those weapons that I picked up earlier. We're going to stash those in the box here. Um, once they've been stashed, we can go look at the storage. We can now see that all these weapons are now listed. Uh, we can also see that I've got additional spacesuits in here that I've found throughout my game, different packs that I've found throughout the game, different helmets that I've acquired. Um, different outfits that I've acquired along the way that I like. This was a lot of fun, by the way. It reminds me of the Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor games. Um, so those are the infinite storage boxes that you want to pay attention to. All right, next up are boost packs. So once you have the boost pack training, you can use your boost pack to do things like this and fly around on planets. And how the boost pack works depends on a variety of factors. First and foremost, the gravity of the planet you're on. Um, different gravity, uh, different planets have different gravity, which means some planets you'll be able to, you know, fly indefinitely, whereas other ones like this one, we can maybe fly indefinitely. Um, it looks like we might be able to. But some of this is determined by the planet's gravity, but some of this is also determined by how many points you have put into the boost pack training. So if you go in here to check out the boost pack training, the different ranks, um, first and foremost, you can use boost packs if you have a rank in it, but then uh, boost packs expend less fuel, they regenerate more quickly, even in the air, and they double their previous bonuses at rank 4. Um, also, at the uh, crafting station, back on the lodge, or anywhere else you can find a crafting station where you can modify spacesuits, if you have the appropriate skill, which is spacesuit design, I'm currently at rank 3, working towards rank 4, you can modify your spacesuits, including the helmet, the spacesuit itself, and the jetpack, and there are different types of boost pack bonuses that you can you can get. So we'll go ahead and take a look at mine really quick. So if you look at this, the stats say it's a balanced boost pack. So there's a basic boost pack, a balanced boost pack, there's a skipper, there's a skip boost pack. Different boost packs do different things. Some of them speed up the trajectory, some of them make you go higher. Um, so it just depends on what you want your boost pack to do. Once you get into spacesuit modification, you can then adjust your boost pack as you see fit to suit your playstyle. Much like other RPGs, Starfield relies upon a level up system. So I'm currently level 34 with this character, as you can see here on the screen. And if I go over into the skills tab, you're going to notice in the bottom left, I have a skill point, which I can use to put somewhere. Now, how do you get skill points? Well, you get skill points by leveling. How do you level? Well, you level by doing all the different activities in the game. You get levels from crafting. You get experience points, I should say. Experience points from crafting, experience points from killing mobs, experience points from discovering locations, experience points from shooting down enemy ships, experience points for modding uh, weapons and your spacesuits. You get um, 
experience points for completing quests. There's lots of ways to get experience points, and as you progress through the game, every time you level, you get a skill point to put anywhere you want in any of these skill trees. There are an unlimited amount of skill points earnable in the game, so you could theoretically, if you wanted to grind it out, you could earn every single skill in this game. Each skill in the game comes with various skill tiers and you can level those up accordingly so every one of these comes with all these different tiers that you can go through but the big thing is just understanding that um, in order to earn skill points you must actually play the game and do activities within the game and once you've earned a level you get a skill point to spend we're gonna go spend that here shortly if you remember how I said in the previous section that each one of these uh, skills has different tiers that are within them so here's a good example we can see uh, all of them have four tiers you start off at rank one um, which generally unlocks something depending on what you're what you're looking at and then you work your way through the ranks each rank has a challenge associated with it so in order to uh, unlock let's look at one where I haven't unlocked it yet uh, I've already have I done that one yet yes um, what about this one? I'm working on this one. Okay, so you see rank 4 is currently locked. So in order to get to rank 4, I must complete rank 3, which says I need to craft 30 spacesuit, helmet, or pack mods. So in order to even get to the point where I can spend a skill point in the rank, I must first unlock the rank by completing the challenge first and foremost. So as many skills as there are in the game, there's also four tiers to each skill. So if you want to fully max out each one of these skills, you need to put four points into it, which equates to a lot of levels that you would need to get to unlock all of these at maximum tier. Now, once I've found something that I want to work on, whether it's, you know, medicine or boost pack training or whatever the case may be, um, once I've unlocked the next tier, as I have here, you'll notice it says rank four available. Unlock this rank to increase the skill. I've unlocked it. If I have a skill point, which I do, I can then choose to rank this up and I'm going to then unlock this tier. Let's go ahead and click that. I have now unlocked that tier of targeting control systems, which means I'm now maxed out piloting and I've maxed out um, that. And I've also maxed out my boost pack training and I can continue to work on all the other skills that I want to get in the game. There are lots of different housing options in Starfield, starting with the apartments that you can purchase on the various planets. We're here on New Atlantis. You can start by purchasing uh, a starter apartment in the, uh, I think it's the well, which is sort of like not that great of an apartment it's like a little single bedroom kind of mm, poverty dwelling uh, but there's different apartments that you can purchase on different planets but there's also apartments that you can get from doing quest lines so as an example um we ran the um the united uh, the the uc uh vanguard quest line and at the end of it um you eventually get access to a penthouse um and once you get access to the penthouse you can come up here and you now have this massive, massive, massive apartment which you can go through and look at and explore. And you can have different houses on different places. You can look down upon the planet here. We go out the other side. You can actually see, um, I gotta remember where the other balcony is right over here. You can see, you know, the city laid up beneath us. And somewhere over here, I believe we can see our ship. Yep, there's our ship way down there. And actually, if you wanted to, we've done this on a live stream before. You can jump down from here and skip all of the like fast travel stuff, and you could go all the way down to your ship. Of course, you could also just open this up and fast travel to your ship from here. But you could use your boost pack and get all the way down from here if you wanted to. But there are a lot of different housing uh, types that you can get in the game, not the least of which are these apartments. But you can also... Um, your, your ships are houses and outposts are houses. So there are all different types of houses that you can get in the game from the stationary ones that are static like the apartments and housings here or the outposts to the remote ones that you can take with you like your various ships. Now if you are into decorating, you can decorate and customize your houses, your outposts and your ships as you see fit. The ship decoration mode just came with the May 15th, 2024 update which now allows you to customize the interior of all of your ships as you see fit as well um, you also have new uh, ship habitats that are completely uh, bare whereas before they came with things inside of them but for right now let's just talk about the decoration mode and how this works so you, you're going to find this 
this is the box you're looking for that says decorate. And once you find it, you're going to click the build button and it's going to open up this inventory right here. And on the top right, you're going to notice that there are various um, tab types um, that, you can, that you can cycle through. And with each, within each one of these types, there are different things you can build. So if we were looking at crafting stations, we could find the various crafting stations. Want to look at the different types of furnitures, you can look at the different types of furniture. You want to look at the different types of decorations from wall mounts to storage chests, you can do that. You want to look at displays, you can do that. You want to look at miscellaneous, put mission boards in here, you can. Um, now in order to do these, you're going to notice on the top left that it requires resources. These are the same resources that you use for modding weapons and spacesuits and doing research and crafting items at your home and cooking and pharmaceuticals and all that stuff. So if you want to do decoration, you need to have the components in your inventory when you're actually in decoration mode in order to build these items. And then once you've got an item built, you can come over and rotate it however you see fit, <clears throat> excuse me, and then place these things as you see fit. So this is for those of you who really want to get into the home decorations, whether it's here, or one of your apartments, like our penthouse here, or the ships and outposts in the game. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. One of the coolest features of Starfield is the fact that you can build your own ships or modify the existing ships. So what you're going to be looking for is the ship technician guy, um, ship services technician, which you can find on any main planet at the starport as soon as you touch down. So behind me, I've got the shield breaker. Um, you can go in here and talk to him, and what you're looking for is the, I'd like to view and modify my ships. Once you see this, you can go in here and you can pick a ship. You can cycle through your existing ships. Um, there's a couple of different things you can do here um, in terms of, uh, you know, building your ships. What you're looking for is the ship builder button. Um, don't worry about the upgrade ship, that's for something different. But we would go in here to the ship builder, and this brings us in here to this window, um, which has a ton of different options. And if you remember, we can start to select individual components. Now, all of these components have been put together. Um, this can be confusing if it's your first time doing it, so don't be afraid to feel overwhelmed. We all felt overwhelmed when we did this. Um, the first thing you can do is if you're happy with something, you can just select color and you can bring up this color scheme and you can color code individual items or all of the items all at once. You can also select all of the items like this um, and, and choose to delete them if you wanted to, but we could unselect this right now. But what we're really looking for is you know, you can pull these parts out like so and drop them off to the side and you're going to be put at the back. But you can also go over here and um, add. And when you hit the add button, this looks a lot like the um, the decoration thing. Because essentially what you're getting here is you have your tabs across the top, which have like weapons, bays, cargo, cockpits, dockers, engines, fuel tanks, gear, grav drives, habs, reactors, shields structural things there's a lot of options here and then you can tap down and go through here and all these things are snapped together and the little the little um light blue things that you're seeing here are the places where it snaps to and how they can snap to whether it's top or bottom or only on the bottom um, they all have different places where they can snap to items now with the may 15th update uh, as of 2024 one of the things they added in the um, habitat tab, if I can go back to the habitat um, section here, um, is uh, also on an individual item like a habitat here, like let's look at the two by ones or the three by ones, and you could tab left or right um, with the D-pad, and what we're looking for is the empty ones. So most of these, the ones that came originally with the game, uh, if you looked at one of these uh, engineering bay or living quarter or something like uh, an all-in-one berth, they're going to have existing um, decorations on the interior. Um, the new ones are completely empty. And when you have a completely empty living quarter like this, um, what that would allow you to do would is then you can 
you can put an empty habitat in here and then you can go in and completely decorate the interior as you see fit just as you would an empty apartment or an empty outpost so for those of you who want to build a ship from scratch you might start with the living quarter like this and then add an engine to it add a reactor to it and so on and so forth and you're going to notice on the bottom right that it says there's an error right now so what's the error well if i were to go to exit it's going to tell me Ship cannot be finalized due to errors in the flight check. Exiting will undo all changes. Exit ship builder, we would say cancel modifications to say, well, what's the error? Um, so what it essentially is telling us is that something didn't match up. So like there's an engine that's not connected to a reactor or the reactor's not big enough to power all the different systems. Like everything has to work before you can actually um, build the ship. So a great way to look at this is to come into existing ships that have been built and then break them apart from here and strip the pieces out um, and say okay I want to take this and, and um, you know go into shipbuilder and I want to move these parts out how do these connect together okay that went there that goes there like what do these connect to how are they all connecting what do I need to have to make this work? okay so this this ship has this type of reactor with this many engines and this many parts and etc and then you can go from there and break it down and build your own ship from scratch and then decorate the interior as you see fit there are lots and lots of things to do in the game, especially when it comes to quests. Um, so there are different types of quests. There are main quests, faction quests, miscellaneous quests, missions that you can get, and activities um, that you can find in the game. But there's also mission boards, which you will find scattered throughout the planets. Some of these are faction related, so it might be like the UC Sistef or the UC um, Vanguard or the um, the uh, the Crimson Fleet, but you can also get access to special missions um, by completing quest lines, such as the end of the UC Vanguard storyline. There is a a specific NPC that you can end up getting favor with, who will give you missions to run later on in the game. But essentially, these mission boards have a variety of different types of missions available, and these are optional, procedurally generated things that. Um, can get a little bit repetitive for some people, but they're just basically filler content that you can do if you want to. And they're generally things like, um, let's go destroy some, um, let's go destroy the fleet. So this will be a space combat mission where we go out and do some sort of ship combat. I'll actually take that because we're going to do a ship combat section of this guide later on. Then there will be one to go kill somebody on a certain planet. We could take that one. But, um, there's another one but then there's some of these that are like deliver nanobots so this is going to be one where it says that it requires 800 kilograms of, of it's going to be cargo 800 kilograms of nanobots if your ship doesn't have enough space you can't take this mission if you do have enough space it will automatically put that in your ship's inventory in your cargo space you will travel to the location and once you debark your ship it will generally automatically update that you've delivered it but there's also things like surveying planets there's also additionally things that are tied to outpost production. So it will ask you to deliver, you know, to, to make something at an outpost. There's also passenger delivery. So these are all these different types of things. Generally speaking, these are going to be related to flying around in your spaceship and doing different things in different places. These are optional filler content. They can get a bit repetitive if you've done a few of them, but it's great if you just want to earn some extra credits or if you're just looking for something to do um, in between quests. I use these a lot when I'm doing streams because it's great to just do some of these randomly while I'm talking to the stream and we're just hanging out together. Now on top of all of the different types of quests you could do in the game, starting with like the main quests, which are related to the Constellation quest line, there's also the faction quest line, like the Crimson Fleet, the Freestar Collective, the Reunion Industry, and then down here, if we go down far enough, I've already completed all of these. The United Colonies quest lines, there's the UC Sysdeft, there's the UC Vanguard. Um, the faction quests, as a general rule, are very linear quests that offer in between anywhere from like 5 to 20 hours of entertainment, the main quest being around 20, um, the faction quests usually being 5 to 10, I would say. Um, um, but all the faction quest lines offer you a very linear path where you're working with the exact same NPCs, and it is a, it's an individual, independent storyline that will take you to different planets. And as a general rule, you're going to get some weapons some spacesuits and t sometimes a ship like the uh the freestar collective will give you a ship as an example you'll also get some weapons along the way um 
and of course XP, which is always a good thing. Um, they're sort of independently to everything else going on in the game, so it's like it's not going to impact the overall universe when you complete them. But these are, if you're familiar with previous Bethesda games, it's like in Skyrim, it's like the Mage Guild, the, the Fighters Guild quests, stuff like that. And in Fallout, it's like all the different faction quests you would get there as well. So on top of all of the activities and miscellaneous missions and mission boards and everything else that you can do, um, you will be able to um, also do faction quests as you uh, come across them. Now when it comes to weapons in the game, there are lots of different weapon types. Energy weapons like laser rifles, um, and then you've got physical weapons like regular rifles, the tombstone, so on and so forth. Um, and all of these do different things. And if you go into your skills, actually, you're going to notice in the combat tab, you've got all these different um, ways to enhance the type of combat that you prefer to do. So I like ballistics weapons, so I maxed out ballistics as a skill tree to get additional bonuses to my ballistics weapons. But there's, you know, melee weapons if you want to go dueling, there's laser weapons, pistol certification, shotgun certification, rifle certification, there's particle beams, uh, heavy weapons, demolition, marksmanship. There's all these different things that you can choose to do, sniper weapons, and so on and so forth. The big thing to pay attention to is on top of all the different types of damage that you could do in the game is that zero G combat is a thing in this game. And if you try to use ballistic weapons in a zero G environment, it will kick you back and throw you around the room, which is why you should always carry some type of energy weapon with you, like a laser rifle, because these do not have that physicality to them. So you can fire these in a zero G environment and you don't have to worry about getting thrown around the room from the, from the, um, from the physics of the game so bear that in mind as a general rule um, because I do um, I can carry quite a few things I do try to carry different types of weapons because different types of weapons do different types of things and you'll come across different types of enemies that have different resistances there's robots and humans and alien life forms and all these different things um, so bear that in mind having weapon variety is a good thing um, and also keep in mind the zero G gravity Next up are all of the companions that you can find in the game, and all of your companions have different skill sets. So Andreja, as an example, is good at stealth, particle beam weapons, energy weapon systems, and theft. Whereas Barrett is very good at starship engineering, particle beam weapon systems, robotics, gastronomy, and etc. Depending on where you have applied these people, um, as an example, I don't have any outposts or anything, but Heller and Lynn both are good at outpost engineering and management. And so if I had them assigned at an outpost, they would be applying those bonuses to that area. But because I don't, they are not. But you'll notice that Sarah and Andreja and Barrett, as examples, are applied to my ship. And you'll notice that they, their abilities, like Starship Engineering and weapon uh, Particle Beam Weapon System, are highlighted in white. And that's because they are on the ship and they are applying those bonuses directly on the ship other things like lasers leadership so on and so forth they're just their passive bonuses so sarah as an example is really good with laser weapons so we should probably have her with a laser sam is really good with rifles so we should probably give him rifle certification actually we should apply him to the ship as well um there we go so we've just assigned him so how do we find them well first and foremost you have to unlock the companions in the first place which is related to the main quest of the game and once you've done that you can then go into the ship window here and go to the crew tab and then you can assign them accordingly. You can also talk to them individually and assign them from there. And then if you have a companion, I know I have Sarah with me, I just don't know where she's at at the moment. Um, we're running around. Here she comes. You can talk to them individually and... and control them from here like tell her you want to go your separate ways or wait here let's trade gear i'll then equip you with something else um if you want to you can go in here and you can give her different weapons types um and you can also um have her equip different um outfits um like the helmet now it's showing my it's showing me with the outfit but i'm not the one wearing it it just shows what the outfit looks like um so that's something to keep in mind um uh, is that you can equip your, your companions. And then certain companions like Sarah or Sam or Barrett or uh, Andreja, you can also have romances with them. As a case In this case, I've romanced Sarah this time around, and we've married her, which unlocks additional bonuses in combat once you have all the faction with them. So, 
So remember how we took this quest at the mission board earlier on in the video? Um, you're going to be able to then go to this area and destroy this fleet. I want to do this quest really quick for everybody just so that we can show some ship combat. Um, so we're going to fly over here and we're going to be on the lookout for bad guys. And we're going to hopefully take out some space pirates. Now we've we've flown in. Nobody's here, so we're going to go to the next one. We're going to travel over to the next section of space here. We're looking for some pirates. We're going to take them out. This is one of those mission board quests we took. There they are. Now in this case, I've got an auto turret with this ship, so as long as I've got a target selected, it will begin to auto target that ship with my auto turret. But I can also use my manuals by holding the left trigger and my missiles by hitting the Y button. And we've destroyed that ship. Now we're going to move on to the next one. We would hit the A button to target it. We just got the mission credit, but there's more than one type here. And you're notice I'm locking on, and it says target lock. Before I lock on, remember how we did the um, target control systems earlier? You have to have rank one in this to unlock this. This allows you to then go in and individually select components um, that you would like to target, whether it's the shields, the engine, their missile system, <clears throat> so on and so forth. I'm going to scoot past it really quick. I've lost the target lock. We're going to spin back around. We're going to go ahead and bring up... Now, notice it says enemy missiles locked on. If you want to break an enemy missile lock, you need to hit the boost button, which is pressing down on the thumbstick, on the left thumbstick. Just as an FYI if you want to break the missile lock. And that's because we've got multiple... Um, guys going on. Let's get a target lock on this guy. Oh, uh, we lost it. Oh, I need to repair my ship. Also notice in the bottom right, we need to repair. <laughs> There's so much going on in combat right now. Alright, here we go. So we've targeted a system, we've blown up a ship, we can get out of the targeting system. So our grav drop's not working right now because they've damaged me, and we're going to get to that in a minute when I've got one guy left. I don't want to do it when I've got so many targets. So we're getting into target range. We're going to target lock him again. We're targeting his shields. Alright, notice on the bottom right, my hull is damaged. So if you have ship parts, you can just click the right thumbstick and it will start to heal. Let's go in here and say I want to go to his engines. Ooh, I lost my target. Now I, do oh, I did it too soon. <laughs> there was a docking option there that I was wanting to... Um, take a look at but that would essentially allow you to board the ship but I destroyed him too soon um, but you can board ships that way um, it is a, a matter of when you have a auto cannon it can be a little tricky boarding ships because your auto cannon still keeps firing um, but once you've destroyed all the ships in the area you can then select these and loot them and loot all the different pieces now one of the things you're gonna notice on the bottom left is that some of my um, gauges are in the red and they're flashing, and that's because they're regenerating right now. They were damaged in combat, we did repair the ship, but those take time to regenerate back to their full capacity. So you have to wait until they're regenerated to their full capacity before you can put all your points back into those. So if you were to go in here and you know take power away from the engines and put it in the grav drive, you could, but if I wanted to take these away and put it into the lasers, I can only do as many lasers as I don't have red. So now that it's it's flashing, I can't put those last two points in um, because it's still regenerating. So that's something to keep in mind uh, when it comes to the ship combat in the game. Now when it comes to fast travel in the game, there are a lot of different ways that you can fast travel. It's up to you to choose which version you want. If you're in your ship, you can choose one of these blue dots that represents a quest. You can click on it and you can hold down the X button and it will go from your cockpit and take you to that quest destination like so it'll give you a grab jump animation and you will go from here nice right 
Now, you could also choose to go to your star map and choose an individual planet or location. Go over here and pick something and say jump over there and we could do it that way. You could also go directly into your missions tab and pick a mission. It says speak to Walter. Okay, let's click that. Set course. It's not going to let me set a course from there um, because that's not a um, mission. He's on the ship, perhaps. But we could say um, power for beyond. Talk to Vladimir to locate temples. Hit the X button and it's going to tell me to go back to the lodge. It's going to immediately pull up the lodge here and I'm going to say land. And instead of having to choose planets and go to the planetary systems, everything, it's going to go straight from the mission. Um, window straight to the lodge and it's gonna fast travel me right to the door of the lodge now if you haven't been to the planet yet it'll take you to the orbit of the planet but if you've been to the planet and you've been to the location it will take you directly to that location once you're on a planet and this is what we're gonna pull up here is with the new um, surface maps that they added is if you pull up your scanner we kind of briefly talked about this earlier if it's been filled in with white and it's a POI you can click on that and fast travel from here but you can also bring up the surface map which is this map right here and you can also get a nice um, top-down view of different locations remember if it's got a black background you've not been there yet you can't fast travel to it if it's got a white background you can hover over it click on it choose to fast travel to it it will then fast travel to that location accordingly but you can also um, travel there on foot if you would prefer modding your weapons is a major part of this game if you want to get into the combat so the weapon workbench in the lodge or weapon workbenches that you find anywhere in the world is where you're going to be spending a lot of time but in order to mod weapons you first have to have the appropriate weapon modding skill so let's go into one of my weapons here like the tombstone scroll down to the like go to the barrel and you notice that over here it says if I want to put the long barrel which I have installed it says I need barrel mods one as well as those resources in the top right now I'm not gonna type too deep into this in this guide because I do have an ultimate beginners guide to crafting and modding in Starfield so go check out that if you want to know the full details of this but essentially what this means is that certain uh, mods like the standard barrel don't require any um, weapon modification knowledge they just require resources iron and sealant but if I wanted to do the barrel I would need barrel mods one and then if you get down in here into you know different things here but weapons uh, you know magazine and battery mods two battery mods three as long as and you have to have those so in order to do that you first have to have the resources but you also have to research the specialization at the research lab in order to do that and that's where you come in here and go to the uh, research lab and you would go down to like the weapons tab and you would say how do I learn like these different things so these are the ones I've completed and this is the one I haven't done yet so I need more resources to do this but you have to do research first to be able to modify all the weapons as much as you might want to modify your weapons spacesuit modification is also a big thing and it works the exact same way as the weapon mod system um, there are different uh, levels to the mods here so helmet mods one uh, as an example and these all do different things again they require resources um, as well as the proper research so you have to first spend resources to do the research and then you have to come in here and actually you know go through and figure out what mods you want to do and have additional resources to do the mods but there's lots of different mods that you can add the further down you go the more things you can add and also if you're looking at um, like legendary you can you can do more mods too we were talking about boost packs earlier this is where you can modify the types of boost pack that you're using like balanced basic no boost pack power boost pack skip capacity boost pack you can also look at like generation slots or emergency aid or the medic slots and different um, different items can be modded different ways but the big thing is that you have to have the research in order to actually mod it in the first place on top of the resources that are required um, but modding spacesuits is a great way to further customize things that you get in the game like these cool um, legendary spacesuits that I've got um, which uh, we can take a look at really quick um, like this legendary suit legendary helmet and then I'm still just using a general old bounty hunter spacesuit but um, I've modded it with ballistic shielding um, and later on I'm going to continue to mod it as I get more resources because I'm short of things like lubricants and some other stuff which are specialty items that you can only find in the higher level planets 
Now, I talked about this briefly in another section, and of course, I still have the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Crafting and Research. But the big thing is that any type of crafting you want to do in this game, everything starts with the research lab. You can do any of the base recipes, whether it's cooking or pharmaceuticals. This doesn't require anything other than resources, alien jerky. But if I want to make alien liquor, I need mixology. If I want to make, uh, you know, sandwiches, it's different. If I want to do alien tonic, I need beverage development. All of these operate the same way as the weapons and spacesuits that we saw earlier on. Um, you know, here's the pharmaceutical lab. You can do base ones without anything, but then if you want to get into the specialty stuff like antibiotic paste, you need medical treatment. If you want to do this one, you need medical treatment too, so on and so forth. And all of that is done at the research station here. So you would go into the research station, you would pick the pr appropriate tab, whether it's pharmacology, food and drink, or outpost development, and you would go in here and you would start to work on things. And if there is a requirement that you don't meet yet, it will tell you in red that it's blocked, and it will tell you why it's blocked. Generally speaking, that's because you need a skill that you haven't yet taken. And in order to do that, it says gastronomy, I would need to go into the skill tab, and we would then look for gastronomy, which I believe is in the physical? Um, don't remember exactly where gastronomy is. Um, it's somewhere in here. Um, once we found gastronomy, we would then, maybe it's the social one. I really don't remember. There it is. So we would then say, okay, I need to learn gastronomy rank one to be able to craft specialty food and drinks and then research additional recipes at a research lab. So it all ties in together uh, if you want to get into the crafting and research in the game. Thanks everybody, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Check out all the different things that I do because I play a lot of different games. I do daily streams here and on Twitch. There's a Discord and a Patreon, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Stay safe and happy gaming.